Hey everybody, I'm Josh Robinson from Illinois Lake Michigan Shore Fishing Facebook group. Man, that's a mouthful. And I'm out here tonight at Diversity Harbor, lakefront side, south side of the mouth of the harbor. It's a cold one tonight, it's about 47 and it's dropping. It's supposed to hit about 42. We've got some good west winds. You know what they say, west is best. I've got some row on float which is great with these west winds because that's keeping that bobber straight out. If I wanted to, I can open the bale and get it even further than I can cast. With that west winds, it's going to push the top hot water out and recirculate the lower colder water up and it's going to bring those larger sport fish in. Give you guys a few tips while I'm out here. I would highly recommend a little bit of rubber glove on the tip of your finger, on your casting finger, especially if you're using Power Pro Super Slick. Out here, you gotta cast, 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 cast. It's the name of the game. A lot of times, that'll get a lot of wear on your finger. That Super Slick in particular will cut the shit out of your finger. It's a good idea to have a little protection on the tip of that finger. All right, so when it comes to cranks and rattles, you want to make sure you know how deep your, the water is you're fishing and how deep your lure is going to actually go. It should say on the packaging or you might be able to look it up online. Let's say for instance there's diversity here. You don't want to come out here with something that's going to go 19, 20 feet deep. The water is only 13 feet. You're going to have a bad time. More than likely you're going to lose your shit. You also want to know what kind of lure you've got. Maybe it's a suspending lure, meaning you're going to crank it down when you stop retrieving it, it's just going to stay exactly where it's at. It's not going to float, it's not going to sink. Let's say this husky jerk here, it's a deep diver. So what you can try to do is throw it out there and as soon as it hits water, crank it for a few times real fast. It's going to dive down deep to the strike zone and then from there you can bring it in real slow to the rest of the retrieve. Or maybe you can just start slip, bring it in real slow as soon as it hits water. Cover the whole water column and just go slowly down. Generally you can tell by the lip how deep of a dive it's going to go. The larger lip is going to go a lot deeper than a, let's say a shorter lip. Let's say it's a floating lure. Give it down deep, give it a pause, it's going to float up, keep that going. Dive, float, dive, float, or it's a sink. Bring it down, let it sink, and then start bringing it in. If you're in the Facebook group, Illinois Lake Michigan Shore Fishing, in the uh, albums, there are posted a lot of water depth maps. Keep in mind with that though, it's not going to be exact. It's going to be plus or minus one or two feet depending on the rise and the fall of the water level and the sand washing away or coming in on the bottom. All right, let's talk a little bit about gear. Let's say you're floating. Shrimp, row, doesn't matter. More than likely you're going to get something a little bit bigger than a perch. Now, I've seen guys out here using something like this. This is not perch season, guys. You are going to lose your shit. Firstly, if you're on the lakefront, I recommend something like this. Like PVC pipe. Two inches bound to an inch and a half. Fits nicely over these railings. Nice, secure hold to your rod. But let's say you're not fishing the lakefront. There's no handles to do something like that for. Pier Amount is a great product. You can find this at pieramount.com. Amazon also holds them. It's got two Velcro strips. You can strap it to pretty much anything. Chain link fence, railing, tree, whatever you've got available. This is nice to have when you're using float. Let's say that hook is deep down in his throat Another nice tool to have. Most places on the lakefront, it's going to be a big drop between you and the water. So you're going to want to net long enough to reach that fish. I recommend something with a telescoping handle. It makes it a lot easier to move, transport, real compact, 
but you also want it strong, sturdy, it's gonna last. I bought this one at Montrose about five years ago. Beat the shit out of it, it is held up. I also wanna point out the proper way to net one of these fish, so let them go in and then lift straight up. If you try to scoop them like this, you're gonna bend your net. And we all know that guy, the fish was this big. Must have been 50 pounds. A good digital scale and a tape measure. Without proof, it's just a story. Picks or it didn't happen. Another piece of gear I really do like. For Paula fish grips. Makes things real easy when you're trying to hold that fish and remove that hook. It's also really convenient when you're weighing it or just taking a nice picture. If you're gonna fish at nighttime, I highly recommend a really good headlamp. There's nothing worse than coming out here by yourself at night, trying to one hand a cell phone, trying to unhook a fish. It's not a good time. If you're throwing anything glow and you need to charge that up, the plug light is an excellent choice. Give you just the right amount of glow you need really quickly. You don't have to come out here with a whole bunch of gear. I personally, I'm loaded down. Better safe than sorry. But as long as you've got a headlamp, a pair of pliers, and a net, you'll be fine. One thing I do want to say, especially if you're coming out here at night, no matter how calm, peaceful, quiet it is, don't ever forget this is still Chicago. If you can come out here with a buddy, that's your best bet. If not, keep your head on a swivel. Look around, stay protected, stay safe. Me personally, I like to keep a fillet knife on my hip. An officer sees you with a fillet knife and a fishing pole, he's not thinking you're just walking around with a deadly weapon. You're using it as, for, as a tool. I don't just keep a fillet knife on my side just for the personal protection. It's also quick access when I hook one. I can slip the gill, bleed out the fish, keep the meat fresher, the eggs fresher if it's a female. All right, one of the best pieces of advice I can give anybody out here is to actually get out here. You can watch all the videos you can find, do all the research you can read, but until you get out here and try, and try, and try, you're never going to get anywhere. This lake is fishable 365. How long has it been since you've been out? Now a lot of guys ask me, how do I decide where I'm going to fish? There's a lot of places on the lakefront to get out. Firstly, I like to go depending on the wind direction. We got some nice west winds tonight, so I'm out here at Diversity. So I have that wind on my back, help launch lures farther, help keep the bobber straight out. Let's say we've got strong north winds. Montrose is a great spot. Let's say we've got south, you've got the mouth of Belmont. East, you're pretty much screwed either way. I would recommend just going into the harbor. Regardless of what your skill level is, there's always a lot more to learn. This lake is always changing fish are always going to be doing something different. Take all advice you get from anybody with a grain of salt. Get out here and just start with what you're most confident with. Use what you know. Every now and then get out of your comfort zone, try something new, but then go back to what you know. Eventually you're going to know a whole hell of a lot more. Just because you didn't get anything doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It's tough out here. Stick with it, keep trying, cast, cast, cast you will get one. Well, I'm about to call it. It is freezing. I had no luck tonight, but that's fishing. That's why it's called fishing, not catching. Had a hell of a time regardless. Can't beat the view. Until next time, keep at it. Yeah, I'm starting to shiver. Till next time, guys.